This raised garden bed here was made from coffee cups. Well, not just coffee cups, but this is definitely in it, but also other soft plastics, like, for instance, the plastic bag that these seed potatoes came in. And also other things like Mars bar wrappers, right through to plastic film used to wrap hay bales on farms. G'day, I'm Mark from Self Sufficient Me, and I love coffee and raised bed gardening because it's easier on my poor old injured body. And I'm wrapped to be able to bring you this garden bed made from totally recycled soft plastics. Let's get into it. Okay, I forgot to say, let's get into it. No, this video isn't sponsored or anything like that, but I did get this garden bed for free from plastic forests, so I could trial it. But I've always had a deep interest in recycling plastics because I think plastic pollution is one of the biggest environmental problems the world faces. So as I show you how I put this bed together, at the same time, I'm going to give you a bit of a background story. We'll plant some potatoes as well, and then I'll finish up with giving you a rundown on what I really think about this type of raised bed build. I've been frustrated for years over how poor our recycling industry is here in Australia and quite frankly, around the world. We're literally spending billions of taxpayers' dollars on environmental things such as climate change, yet stuff all on incentives to recycle our megatons of plastic waste, much of it spilling into our oceans. Let me give you this prediction. We're never going to ban our way out of using plastics. The only way we're going to stop turtles choking on plastic bags in the ocean is to make this type of plastic a valuable resource to recycle. There's a difference between soft plastics and hard plastics. The technology and infrastructure to recycle plastic bottles and drums like this one has been around for ages and it's quite easy to do. You can make a plastic bottle, recycle this down and make another plastic bottle out of it, but you can't recycle down a bag like this say, and make another bag. It just doesn't work that way. It's a different type of plastic altogether. Soft plastics like candy wrappers, the plastic that lines a coffee cup, the plastic bag that your sliced bread comes in, grocery bags, etc. Well, that isn't easy to recycle. But recently, over the past several years, technology, against the odds and with little help from the government, has been developed and it's not only able to recycle these things, it can do it in an environmentally friendly way. Did you know that resin made from this type of soft plastic can be added to bitumen roads to make those roads stronger, last longer, more waterproof and get less potholes? It's true. But a little birdie told me the other day that a big mining and bitumen producer said off the record, why would we want to do that? Make bitumen last longer. We're in the business of making roads. In other words, roads built with a short lifespan is good for business. This is the corporate mindset that we need to change. Over in India, they've built over 50,000 kilometers of this reinforced bitumen roads. And that's a third world country or a developing country. Here in Australia, first world country, we've only built 3,000 kilometers of equivalent roads reinforced with this type of plastic to make them last longer. It's pretty pathetic, isn't it? I don't know if you're aware, but up until just a few years ago, Australia was shipping tons of its plastic waste over to Asia for it to be processed over there, only for most of it to be burnt and then the sludge product pumped into rivers and out to sea. Shipping out plastic waste has now been banned, so we're forced to deal with our own waste, which is what we should have been doing all along. I've had a few long chats with David Hodge, the CEO of Plastic Forests, and he tells me that the problem now that they're facing is not necessarily recycling these plastics, because that technology is done and dusted. It's 
how do you then make any coin out of it and get people to support buying the retail side of it so that the whole cycle is viable. See, people are happy to put their plastics in their recycle bin, but we don't actively look to buy products made from recycled plastics. And without this demand, there simply isn't enough money or incentive to keep these critically important plastic recycling plants running. However, if more people supported the industry at the retail end, this would not only keep the recycling plants running, it would spur more innovation and research into more and improved products made from recycling plastic waste. Wouldn't that be a good thing? Products like this simple, but I have to say extremely effective raised garden bed. It took me literally under 10 minutes to put together. instructions say that you can use a screwdriver you don't have to use any power tools and that's true you just get a hammer and tap the screws in but I just found that a little bit of pressure with an electric drill was the way to go because the self-tapping screws just did the job and the other thing I did against the instructions was instead of reversing those screws so that the sharp end wasn't protruding through the two layers of plastic. What I did was left it protrude through and I just filed the ends off to blunten them. I have another bed that I will trial using stainless bolts and nuts. Of course, will mean that I'll need to drill a hole through it. So it might take a fraction longer to assemble, but obviously bolts will be stronger than screws. Having said that, now that I've worked with this plastic sheeting firsthand, I can see that the self-tapping screws actually fix really well. You're not going to be able to pull that apart. And because of the circular type of even pressure, you know, circles are quite strong and they've got an even sort of force all around it. Don't get me into too much physics. I know you guys will kill me in the comment section, but the bottom line is I don't reckon that's going to pull apart in, you know, very... No, well, I mean, time will tell, of course, but... I can't see that pulling apart for a heck of a long time, if ever. So the bolt thing might just be a little bit of an overkill. This is certainly much faster, but then drilling some holes and putting some bolts through wouldn't take that much longer either. So I thought I would try both ways. The other thing is I requested that I get these beds at the 750. The highest is 600 on their website at the moment. But I wanted the 750 because I like that extra height. And the majority of my raised beds are around the 750 mark. And I think that's a good height, but you might be happy with the 600. I think it's a reasonable cost for a raised garden bed. And it's such a simple idea. It's just a single sheet of plastic rolled around and joined together. What could be simpler than that? So I'm just gonna spread these around roughly around 30 centimeters apart, keeping them just in from the edge. And now another sort of row in the middle here, one right in the middle, say a bigger one. I'll have the eyes facing up when I bury them down. And we've only just made up this bed so the soil is nicely tilled and loose. And that's what potatoes love. And the way I'm gonna bury them now is just Woozhel the soil down, that's the technical word, woozhel, and just bury it down to your about wrist deep. So, you know, six inches or so, six to eight inches down, and then just cover over. If you want, you can use two hands. And we're gonna put a mulch on top of this once these are all buried as well. And now this here, is my special duckling mulch mix. And it's fairly fresh at the moment, but by the time these potatoes start sprouting and coming through, it'll be about three or four weeks. This will all dry out and won't be as potent, but it'll still give a nice feed to those potatoes as this bed gets watered or the rainfall comes, and that'll work a treat. And this will also keep the weeds down and allow those potatoes to grow through unimpeded by any other types of weeds. So it does several good things. Nutrients, keeps the weeds down, keeps the moisture locked in. Might give this a bit of a water later just to settle it down. 
but you don't necessarily need to water potatoes too much until they start sprouting and coming through. Otherwise they might rot in the ground if you overwater. Now that I've assembled this one, I'll be chatting with David and letting him know my first impressions on setting this raised garden bed up in my own veggie patch. I'm impressed. It's super strong, so easy to assemble, a good size and environmentally friendly. This ticks a lot of boxes for me. And there are other products made from soft plastics such as garden stakes and fence posts that I'd like to give a try also. I'll put a link to Plastic Forests down below in case you're in the market to buy a raised garden bed and you think that this might be suitable for your place. That's not everyone's cup of tea, I admit that, but you might be as passionate as I am about recycling plastics and want to support this type of industry. If you are, really consider one of these garden beds. I'm going to get more of them. I think they're really cool and I'm looking forward to seeing what innovative and other types of products they can come up with in the future. I think if that industry does get supported a lot more than it does from the government and just from us, and usually it's the people that push the government, especially in the Western countries, <laughs> if we can do that, I really do think we can get on top of this worldwide press plastic problem and I think that would be a great problem to get a hold of if not solve if we can. Well I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did make sure you give it a big environmentally friendly thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and also share this video around because that helps heaps especially with these types of subjects. Thanks a lot for watching guys. Bye for now. What are you doing in there? Hey? Huh? Do you like my new garden bed? Think it's going to be a winner? Or are you just hanging around for the free grubs? Oh, the free grubs, right. Okay.